Today on Perpetual Projects, we are gonna start the process of figuring out what is causing our engine to run rough. If you've got an engine like this, the first two things you need to do are what we're gonna demonstrate in this video. Now, I know our engine is running rough, but if you have an engine that is new to you, you bought a car, you got an engine from the junkyard, this is a test that isn't a bad idea to do, no matter what the engine is, if it's unknown to you. You can do these tests with the car engine not in the car. So the first thing we're gonna do is a compression test. Pretty sure I got this on, off of Amazon. We'll leave a link in the description. You can spend a lot of money if you want to, but you really don't have to. We're more than anything not so concerned about the number, more than anything worried about the evenness, because I don't expect this thing to have 200 pounds of cranking compression. I would be really, really surprised if it had anywhere close to that. First thing we're gonna do is get all the plug wires and all the plugs out. If you don't know your firing order and you're not prepared or able to put it back, um, you might wanna put some tape on your plug wires and keep them in order so that you can put them back the way it came off. Uh, we're actually gonna go further than just the compression test, so I'm not gonna worry about any of that. So we're gonna pull all of our plugs out um, and if you want the absolute best results, that's probably a good idea. Uh, we're also going to put a battery charger on this car because uh, as much as you're gonna crank it over, you could do it without the battery charger, but the, the closer you can get to duplicating the situation in every cylinder the same way, especially for the purposes of what we're trying to do. Again, like I said, we're not trying to get a number. Like we're not gonna go compare this to the book and say, oh, this engine should have 130 pounds of cranking compression. We're gonna compare each cylinder to the other cylinders and look for them to be even and not scattered all over the place. Hey, is this a factory option? No, that's a, <clears throat> that's a, somebody put side post battery terminals on this car and the marine battery we're using is now permanently installed in something else. So we need to get battery cable ends and a different battery. It's on the list. Yep. All right, so we're gonna tie our throttle all the way open. I'm just gonna use a zip tie, just so that, again, repeatable results. That way it's all the way open and so we're not sitting here pumping the throttle open and closed the whole time we're working on it and putting a bunch of gas down in the engine when we get done to try to restart it. We'll also use a zip tie and tie the choke completely open. Again, just so <clears throat> for repeatable results. We want as much airflow as we can get. Don't forget to take your zip tie off before you start it when you're done or well, you can see what it's gonna do. It's gonna rev to the moon. Okay, now that we've got our carburetor all tied open, throttle and choke, we're gonna go ahead and start at the number one cylinder and just work our way around the engine. We'll go down the odd side, then go down the even side. What we're looking for here is even numbers in every cylinder. And this engine's been sitting for a long time, so I wouldn't be surprised if they're not completely even. What we're looking for, I guess what you're looking for is even numbers. If you've got an engine that's been running, if it's been sitting, don't be surprised if they're not completely even. What we're looking for is some compression in all the cylinders and if we have one that's extremely low we might try putting a little oil in it and trying to get it to come back around just for the purpose of this test we're looking for mechanical damage more than anything we want to see that it's got a piston in every hole i mean I, I assume it does but that's the kind of stuff we're looking for that the the valve train is opening and closing the valves it doesn't have a valve stuck completely open doesn't have a hole in a piston doesn't have it's things like that that's what we're looking for so how will you know if you have that if you have some compression. If you've got any of those problems, you'll have near, near zero or none in a, in, in a cylinder. And you can, you can also, you can't rule out head gaskets, but you can get an idea. If you've got two cylinders next to each other and neither one of them have any compression, there's a chance it has a blown head gasket. And it's just moving the compression back and forth between those two cylinders. So now to do a compression test, you just have to screw your tester into the spark plug hole and Depending on how your tester is set up, sometimes there's a, a Schrader valve, which is like a valve core out of your tires in the hose. Uh, this one doesn't have one. 
it must be inside the, the tester up here. Uh, if you have one and you've taken it out to use it for something else, make sure you put it back or it won't hold the reading. We're just going to use the power probe and stick it in the starter relay and turn it over. Now you can turn it over and count the number of times it pumps or uh, what I do, I just let it go to the highest reading. I keep going until it quits moving and that gives me an idea where we're at. So, looks like 165. Um, that's, that's much higher than I was expecting. All right, we'll go on to the next one. Now you just do all of them and we'll write them down and we'll come back after we get it done. Okay, we have our numbers. I'm just gonna hold this up to the camera. Maybe Amber can make it longer so you can see them. They're a lot better than I was expecting. They're not great. So our, our biggest difference is between number one and number seven, and it's about 35 PSI, uh, which is roughly 20% of the highest reading, which is 165. But overall, the lowest number is what I was, is, is higher than I was kind of expecting the whole thing to have. So that can mean a couple of things. It's been sitting for a long time. Like I said, it may still need to, it hasn't run much. And you know, uh, the sea foam through the carburetor, clean up some cylinders, maybe free up a stuck ring. I don't, don't really know what is causing it. The result of this test for me is I have something to work with. I know that I don't have a dead hole. All the cylinders have a good amount of compression in my opinion for an old stock 318. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna leak it down and see if we can hear where that compression is going and that'll tell us if we have another mechanical problem like a, a valve seat that's leaking or a valve that's maybe starting to get burnt or a ring that is really bad. And if it's a ring that is, if we hear a lot of leakage into the crankcase when we're doing the leak down test, I'm gonna count that as a good sign because we haven't really run this motor enough to really get the rings to come back around if we had a stuck ring. So now, next step is do a leak down test. Let me get the tools out and I'll show you what we're gonna do. So it's been a couple of days now and unfortunately I got my leak down tester out and one of the gauges was broken. So I had to order a new one. So I did uh, what I do and I bought the cheapest one I could find on Amazon. So we're gonna get this one set up and see if it works. If it works, we'll throw a link in the description. So when you're getting ready to do your leak down test, the first step is to get the cylinder that you're working on to top dead center on the compression stroke. And the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm just gonna use my power probe to jump the relay over here. And then I'm using my finger to hold it over the spark plug hole until I feel compression come out. And now I'm gonna line the markup on the balancer to zero. Once you have the cylinder you're gonna test at top dead center on the compression stroke, you need to screw your hose that comes in your test kit in there. And it, these are pretty much the same as the ones that go with the compression tester as well. But if you're using one off of a compression tester, you need to make sure that it does not have a straighter valve in it because that'll throw your readings off. After you've got your hose screwed into your cylinder there, you need to set your gauge up and the way you do this is you have to plug shop air into it and you turn your regulator up until your leakage gauge on this side comes around and your needle goes to the zero mark. Like that. Once you have your gauge set to zero, be careful when you plug this in because sometimes the engine will turn over. So make sure you're, whatever you're turning the crankshaft with and your hands are clear of the belts and the, and the fans. So then once you plug it in, you're gonna get a reading. And ours is showing about 30% leakage, which on this gauge is green. Um, I think that's pretty standard. We're gonna call this good. And this engine still has not been heat cycled a bunch and we haven't really driven it. So the rings could come back around a little more. And this cylinder is also the one that had the highest compression. So that, that makes sense. So now we can go through the rest of our cylinders and on a V8, you, well, I'm not gonna say on every V8. On this V8, 
I know that 90 degrees on the crankshaft is going to adv advance me one cylinder in the firing order. So I can go through the firing order and turn the crankshaft 90 degrees each time and go through the whole firing order to check the rest of the cylinders. We're going to go ahead and do that now and we'll come back and discuss the results. All right, so we finished our leak down test and ours came in around 30 to 40 percent, which is about what I was expecting. And more than anything, I wasn't really looking for a number on this test. What you can do with this test is you can hear if you have a cylinder that's leaking particularly bad, you can use the sound of the air and figure out where it's coming out of. Like if it's coming out of the, the intake here or where the carburetor is supposed to be, then it might be something within a, a, a stuck intake valve or something going on there. If you can hear it coming out of the tailpipes, then it could be on something on the exhaust side, either a va stuck valve, maybe a burnt valve. Or most of the time what I find is you can hear it coming out of the crankcase. Take a oil cap off, put your ear to this. You can hear the air is leaking through the crankcase. And that is, if it's not excessively bad, usually just rings. Because rings will leak. They have a gap. So they're going to leak some. And if it's really, really bad, you'll know based on the reading on the leak down tester, you may have another problem. Since we had good compression and our leak down numbers looked pretty good, Ours is just going to be old rings that haven't really had a lot of heat cycles in them yet. So maybe if, it, if you're interested, comment below. We can revisit this test after we get this car running and put some miles on it and see if our compression and our leak down comes up and gets better. There you go. Two tests that I think are essential for an engine that you don't know anything about. Gives you a good idea of the mechanical portion of the engine if it's working the way it's supposed to. Next thing we're going to do is dig into the ignition and make sure all the stuff in that is working the way it's supposed to. If you want to see that video, subscribe, turn notifications on. It will be out very soon. See you soon.